Hi, my name is John Winings. Welcome to Northern Illinois University Computer Science 501 for the fall 2020 semester. In this video, I'll show you how to locate the faculty page to access the homework assignments, data files, how to hand in your homework, and how to access Blackboard to take exams and quizzes. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is find my faculty page that have all the course assignments and handouts and things like that. So go to the uh, NIU Computer Science homepage at www.cs.niu.edu. You click About. You can go to Faculty and Staff. Scroll down in the faculty. My name is Winans right there, second to the last. You can then go here to my faculty homepage, and down here you'll find CompSci 501. On this page, you will see our links to all the video lectures and assignment material that you need for this course. You should revisit this website quite frequently to see uh, updates as new assignments become available, new lectures and so on are added below. Okay, read this whole thing so you're familiar with what's going on and where everything is. I am John, here's how you contact me, here's your TA, here's how you contact your TA. We have these hours. We will be in Microsoft Teams for live dialogues during these times, as well as by appointment. If you need to get a hold of us and you want to make a schedule an appointment, even during office hours, right, you want a firm time to meet, send an email and ask for a time slot, and we'll try to schedule you in. Uh, down here are the essentially the rules for the course, right? Here's the syllabus. The syllabus defines the course. It tells you that this book is required. There will be readings in here. You will want a copy of this text, ninth edition, that will match on the, uh, the, the tentative schedule these reading uh, chapter and section numbers. They will match the, uh, the, this text, okay? Um, there will also be material made available on the course webpage, which you're looking at right now, as well as the Blackboard site. We'll look at that in a minute. Here's how your grade will be assigned and distributed. You must receive a passing grade in both the exams and the homework assignments in order to pass the course. There's no attendance policy. It's asynchronous. It's online. I strongly recommend you watch all the videos, even if you watch them at double speed to save time. Uh, here are the rules about exams. We do not allow you to take the exams late. They'll be scheduled on specific days and certain time windows, and that will all be announced in Blackboard as well as the faculty website. Programming assignments. Read all the details on how we're going to do this. The bottom line is that your grade is uh, based on percentages in here somewhere. Here you go. Output is 60%. Coding style and quality is 20%. And documentation, 20%. We'll talk about documentation in a minute. Sometimes we'll be, you will be asked to uh, provide output that matches exactly or close to a reference. And we talk about the diff command, and you can see about that. If you don't already know how that works, in a link to the Unix documentation. Uh, what else is going on here? If you're late... You will be penalized 15% of your total score per day for the first two days. After that, you receive zero. Hand your stuff in on time. Uh, do not suffer a bad grade just because you handed some stuff in late. This section here about your computing account, okay? You have two accounts, essentially, at Northern Illinois University. You have one account to access Blackboard. That's what this part up here is being uh, discussing, right? If you have trouble with your, your password to get into Blackboard, you call ITS at this number right here, or you can send them email or something like that, right? The phone number usually works pretty good. I think you can also go to like password.niu.edu. When in doubt, just call this phone number and ask them what to do. This is a completely separate account to access the Unix servers in the computer science department on machines named Hopper and Turing down here, okay? These two machines are exactly identical. Anytime I refer to either Hopper or Turing, I'm referring to both. You can use either one interchangeably, okay? If you need to access these machines, you use the same ZID you use to get to the other university computers, but... Your password on these servers is different than your university password. If you don't know how to set it or you forgot it, contact Duffin at cs.niu.edu or uh, Berezin at cs.niu.edu. This is Kirk Duffin and John uh, Berezinski. 
They are the administrators for those uh, machines. If you need help, contact your TA or myself with the contact information on the faculty page. If you need an, uh, an accommodation of some kind, contact the, dig the, 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 the DRC at this address or send them email here. Do not cheat. It will be not, uh, we will not tolerate cheating of any kind. Read this to make sure you understand what we mean by cheating and don't do it, okay? That is the syllabus. What else do we have on this page? We have how to hand in your homework assignments. Here's a detailed walkthrough of how to use a system called uh, MailProgue, okay? This particular demonstration is, I guess, if for 463, you're in 501, so you'll say MailProgue.501. You'll see that in assignment zero when we talk about that. Uh, this is the only way to hand in your homework. Do not hand it in any other way. Don't email it to me. Don't email it to your TA. Don't post it in Blackboard. No, you have to hand it in this way. Otherwise, we cannot grade it. If we cannot grade it, you will receive a zero. Don't name your files with evil characters. This discusses how not to name files and some of the repercussions of doing so. Read this, understand it, do it. If you don't understand it, ask your TA or myself for help. Documentation standards. The documentation standards for this class are based on widely accepted standards. Go through this document, read through here, understand the style and documentation requirements that we ask for in this course. Otherwise, you will lose a large amount of your grade. It's worth 20% of your grade just documenting it correctly, okay? Here's a very clean example of exactly how we want you to document your code all the way down to the slash star star at the top. This is a form of Doxygen style documentation. It's a widely used tool. What we will talk about in another video. If you need to access these machines and you suffer uh, from using a system that does not have SSH, like Windows, for example, you can download a tool called Putty and you can download a tool called FileZilla. FileZilla allows you to copy files back and forth between uh, NIU and your desktop PC. And Putty allows you to use a system called SSH to log in and access the command line on Turing and Hopper. Okay, there's a lot of how to download it, how to use it, how to configure it, and all that stuff is in here. If you run into problems, contact me or the TA. Uh, nowadays, uh, if you use Linux or, or, or Mac OS or OS 10 or whatever they call it today, the uh, SSH command is built in right into the OS, so you don't need this. Even in Windows, you don't really need it either. The Windows Terminal or WSL or something like that uh, has SSH built in as well. But if you can't figure out how to use it or don't know what it is, or this is the first time you've ever come in contact with it and don't otherwise understand, Putty is pretty straightforward. You just install it, it opens up a window and you type on it. If you're new to Unix completely, there's uh, some basic commands here and some documentation on how to use them. If you're on a command line and you need to edit a file, Nano for some reason is popular. I guess the reason is that it's easy to learn. Although if you use this thing, it's very cumbersome, in my opinion, to man manage any file of any consequence. If you're going to write software, learn how to use an editor that's designed for writing software like Vim or Emacs. These are command line editors. These are pretty much the gold standard. If you're going to do any real volume of work uh, for Unix systems, these are the editors you're going to use. I use Vim. You'll see it a lot in future lecture videos. Here's a, some links to a debugger called GDB. We may uh, mention that in passing somewhere along the way. This is useful to debug programs where they die and you have absolutely no idea what it was doing when it ceased to run. There's some simple commands you can use with this debugging tool and ask it where it was when it died. Okay, so that's these links up here, all right? I can't stress enough that this schedule is tentative. I'm going to do my best to try and hit these topics during these weeks. All right. You'll notice it ends a little bit early. It's probably going to shift back a little bit. I'll try to make sure that the exam, the midterms arrive on these weeks. All right. And they'll cover the material uh, that, that, that is uh, the lectures that are made available before the midterm. 
Uh, I will announce the specific dates and time windows when you have to actually take these exams and the final exam when we know more information. The university has not yet released a final exam schedule for uh, asynchronous courses, these purely online courses like this one. So when I know more about it, I'll let you know as soon as possible. You'll get a minimum of one week advance notice. And even now, you should plan that on week five and week nine, there will be a midterm. And during the standard, uh, normally scheduled fi uh, final exam week, that will occur the final in there somewhere. Here's a note on using uh, WSL and other operating systems in your home. I encourage it. You should know how to do this. However... Keep in mind that the only thing that matters as far as your grade is concerned is our ability to compile and run your program on Hopper and or Turing. And if it doesn't build or run there, it's wrong and you'll receive a zero. So you must test on uh, either Hopper or Turing before you hand it in. Otherwise, you know, who knows what will happen. Um, your programming assignments will be listed here as they become available. Assignment zero is available now. It'll be due the end of the first week, of course. Uh, there'll be another video that we'll all use to walk through this and how to do it. These course notes here are fairly extensive. There's a lot of information in here. I strongly suggest you look at these. There's a huge amount of help that'll be directly applicable to your homework assignments in these notes, Okay. It's almost an entire book in itself. So this combined with the required text should get you uh, all the coverage you'd ever need for the topics of this course. All right. The lectures will be in video form. There'll be links posted to them as they are available down here. The video you're watching right now is the introduction to CompSci 501. These are hosted on YouTube. Uh, if you have trouble accessing that for some reason, let me know. We can post them somewhere else as needed. Here's some more documentation uh, that are off uh, off this site uh, that I use all the time. The uh, the cp cpreference.com. Uh, this one's new to me, Fredosaurus. I got this link from another professor. This looks like a pretty reasonable thing to use as well. Again, more than enough material to do well in this course is linked to from this page. Now, this is how you get to the homework and your syllabus information, okay? for taking quizzes and exams and receiving announcements of uh, events that apply to the course, you need to log into Blackboard. Blackboard is located at webcourses.niu.edu. When you go there, you'll see a page presumably like this. Uh, you may have to log in first. I guess I already logged in. Uh, once you've logged in, you see a page that looks like this. You log in with your Z number and so on. If you click on courses, now this is the instructor's view, all right? And uh looks like the current semester is still set to summer. Your course should appear in your current, in our upcoming courses uh, somewhere along the lines of this. So this is for 501. You click this. There should be a, uh, at a minimum, a home page, an announcements page, and an assessments page. Okay. In the assessments page, there will be links, there will be folders for quizzes and exams. As soon as I start posting them, they'll uh, uh, appear in here, okay? Under announcements, there will be an archive of announcements that I will post in Blackboard. And every time I post an, an announcement in Blackboard, I will set it to email your student account a copy of the announcements right then and there, okay? So that there will be a minimum delay between the time I make an announcement and you have the opportunity to read it by being alerted in your email. Uh, you can also just come in here and just see all the old ones if you forgot or whatever. Okay, on the home page in Blackboard, it kind of gives you this summary. Here's your announcements. And then when there's assignments that are due and so on, they'll be listed in here as well. Okay, you can click on my grades. You can see what grades, uh, you know, what your current grades are. You should verify, you know, that we don't type them in wrong or whatever. When you grade an assignment, there'll be uh, comments and things like that uh, uh, associated with your work in the grades that we assign on links down here. Okay, so that's how you use Blackboard. That's how you access the faculty web page and get access to the materials. I hope you have a good semester. See you next time. Bye.